All right, this is the review page eight, starting with number 37. Find the measures of angles one, two, three, and four if lines W and X are parallel. So these are parallel. We gotta find the measures of the angles. For angle one, its relationship with this angle is that they are alternate exterior. So I know angle one is congruent to 128. And remember when you have um, a relationship between parallel lines and a transversal, it seems like all of the angles created are either supplementary or congruent, either one. So once you find one angle measure, you can find the other angle measure, and then all of the angles are either gonna be one of those or the other. There's only like two choices to pick from, right? So if angle one is 128, angle two is vertical to that, so it's also gonna be 128. They're congruent. Angle three is supplementary to both of these. So together, 128 and angle three are gonna add up to 180. So angle three has to be 42. No, 52. And then angle four is uh, vertical to 128. Okay, number 38, find X if line segment BD is, perpen is the perpendicular bisector of AC. So here's AC. If this is the perpendicular bisector, it cuts this in half. So CD and DA are congruent to each other. We're looking for x, so we're going to set these equal to each other. 5x minus 6 is equal to 3x plus 8. And then we get rid of the smallest x. Add 6 to both sides. Divide by 2, and we get x equals 7. Okay, number 39. Sorry, it's my dog. Number 39, find the volume of each figure shown below and round to the nearest tenth. If necessary, it's not multiple choice. All right, so volume for a cone, cone is pi <clears throat> times the radius squared times the height, all divided by 3. Volume of a cylinder is pi times the radius squared times the height, not divided by 3. I don't know what 3 is, why it's a magical number, but the only difference between the volume of a cone and the volume of a cylinder is that we take a third of it for the cylinder. We just leave it for the, sorry, a third of it for the cone. We just leave it for the cylinder. All right, so here, we're just going to plug in our numbers. So pi, it's, does it tell us it's not multiple choice? We're down to the nearest tenth. We're going to use 3.14 for pi. Our radius here is r. We don't know what, oh, sorry, 3.9 squared times the height, which is 5.6, all divided by 3. And this would be a calculator question, so once you have that, you would just use your calculator to find it. Um, first, I'm going to do 3.9 squared, 15.21 times, I'm just going to use the pi button on my calculator, equals times 5.6 equals, so that's the entire top, 267.588 blah, 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 and then divide it by 3. And it says in the directions to round to the nearest tenth, so that would be 89.2, and it's volume, so that's units cubed. It's in centimeters. So we're going to say 59.2 centimeters cubed. Volume is for three-dimensional shapes. Since it's three-dimensional, we put a little 3 here. If it was two-dimensional, we'd put a little 2 here. Okay, then same thing for the cylinder. We're going to set it up. I wouldn't even realize there's another shape here, sorry. Um, we're going to set it up and then, um, <coughs> sorry. <laughs> we're going to set it up and then round to the nearest tenth. Um, all pi times 6 squared times 10. 6 squared is 36. 36 times 10 is 360. And then we want to multiply that by pi. 360 times the pi button equals about 1130.97 blah 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 we're rounding to the nearest tenth and that's going to bump this to 1131 so it's about 1131 that's in centimeters and then they're cubed since it's a 3d shape and then i kind of wrote over this last one here this looks like a box right a um what am i trying to say prism, a rectangular prism. Um, so here, length times width times height is going to give us our volume. 
So that's five times four times three, and that's in inches. Five times four is 20, 20 times three is 60, so that's 60 cubic inches, 60 inches cubed. All right, so for volume of a uh, rectangular prism, length times width times height, volume of a cylinder, pi r squared h, and volume of a cone, pi r squared h divided by three. All right, number 40, find the volume of the water in a rectangular kiddie pool that measures 12 feet by 6 feet if the pool is 18 inches deep and the water depth is half of the pool depth, right? So we're looking at a rectangular kiddie pool, something like this, right? And it's half filled with water, so we can do a little water level half up. So we got to kind of think of the dimensions, how much water is there, right? And it doesn't really have waves in it. It's just my drawing. All right, so if it's 18 inches deep and only half of that's filled up, then it's 9 inches deep of water. So we're going to multiply 12 times 6. And then 9 inches um, is the uh, depth of the water, but we want to put it in feet because the length and the width of the pool is in feet, right? So... 9 inches out of 12 inches gives us a foot, right? If we simplify that, 9 over 12, we can divide the top and the bottom by 3, and that gives us 3 fourths. So we're going to multiply this times 3 fourths, right? So if we multiply it all out, this is like saying 12 over 1 times 6 over 1 times 3 over 4. So 12 times 6 is 72. 72 times 3 is 216. So we'll have 216 on top, and then 1 times 1 times 4 is 4 on the bottom. 216 divided by 4 equals 54. So we're looking at, I'll write it over here, about 54. It's in feet, and it's cubed because it's volume, right? So pay attention to where it says it's 12 feet by 6 feet, but then the water's only 9 inches deep. You have to put that in terms of feet. That's a foot and a half. And then half of that is filled with water. So we're looking at the volume of the water. Half of a foot and a half is three quarters of a foot. All right, number 41. Find the volume of the square pyramid shown here. And volume of a pyramid is length times width times height divided by three. Length times width times height divided by three. There's no circles in here, so there's no need to use pi. Right? For a cone and a cylinder, we use pi because we had circular bases. Here, we don't have a circular base. So it's kind of like a cone. You find the area, and then you divide it by 3. You just don't have pi involved. Okay, so length times width times height. Um, length and width is 12. So 12 times 12. And then the height here it shows is 8 inches. I know this printing job isn't very good, but it's 8 inches. And all of that's being divided by 3. So you would use your calculator for a problem like this. This is um, just meant to test whether or not you know how to set it up. So 12 times 12 times 8 equals 11.52. And then we're going to divide it by 3. 384, and that's in inches. So it's about 384 inches cubed because it's volume. So far, so good. Number 42, a building in the shape of a square pyramid, just like this one up here, square is the base shape and then it's a pyramid, is being built in Las Vegas. The height of the building will be 309 feet and a side of the base will measure 250 feet. How many square feet is the building? A building in the shape of a square pyramid. So we've got the square base, right? And then we have the top and it comes out just like this top shape that we did, right? And one side of the square base is 250. And so this side would be 250. And then the height straight from the vertex straight down, perpendicular to the bottom is 309. The height of a building is 309. Okay, so same thing. We're gonna do volume equals length times width times height. Length and the width is 250. Height is 309 all divided by three. That's all in feet. And it says how many square feet um, is the building? How many square feet? A building in the shape of a square pyramid is being moved. 
height and the size of the base will measure 250. How many square feet is the building? Is it looking for volume? Volume is cubic feet. Hmm, square feet tells me it's looking for surface area, which is not volume. Hmm, all right, well, if it was looking for volume, we'll just finish that part. It looks like if it's asking for square feet, that's the, um, think of uh, like surface area and area is like, a volume would be what's inside of a present and the surface area would be how much wrapping paper do you use to cover the outside, right? So volume is what's cubed. Surface area is just squared. It's just two dimensional. So volume is what's inside of a present. Um, surface area is how much paper, uh, wrapping paper you use to cover the outside. Let's finish volume and then we'll do surface area. So 250 times 250 times 309 divided by three. That gives us a humongous number for volume, right? That's in cubic feet. And that's a whole lot of stuff. So we're gonna scrap that. We think it's surface area, right? So here we need to find the dimensions of each triangular shape, right? We know the square on the bottom is 250, but that's not part of the building, right? How many square feet is the building? The build, you know what? I, that's a confusing question. I don't know what it's asking. Aha, so I did the responsible thing and I just checked and this problem is no longer part of the review. They took it off and in fact, they took off the last page as well. So you don't have to finish this. You don't have to know how to do this. Um, we're gonna stop at number 41 right here and just ignore this in the last page if you got that far, fantastic. So they kind of simplified a little bit. A few of these problems we did up in here, they actually took out as well, but doesn't hurt you to know. They did include a lot of practice questions with cones. So maybe if you're gonna memorize a formula, maybe memorize the volume of a cone, which is pi r squared times h, all divided by three. Like this guy right here, they had a whole bunch of questions on this. So try and memorize this volume if you're going to memorize any. A cylinder looks exactly the same, you just don't have the three on the bottom. And then a cone is like a cylinder, but divided by three for the volume. Okay, so if you're gonna memorize one, do that. Um, otherwise, we're gonna stop here. There's actually a second part to this question that wasn't included, but when I went back to get the rest of it, um, they completely did away with the entire problem, probably because it was unfinished. So great job guys with the review. And if you have any questions, let me know. As long as you understand how to do all these things, um, don't stress over if you can't memorize formulas or whatever, just do your best. You guys have been working hard. We've covered all the material. The construction thing isn't a big deal. Um, but uh, you know that might be the, the thing that we're most unfamiliar with, otherwise, just study everything up in the folders uh, from the year. And good luck. Let me know if you have questions. Thanks.